Next item, please. Special reports, class of 2022. Acknowledgements, Mr. Adam Martin. Accomplishments. Accomplishments, I'm sorry. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, President McDonald, uh, Dr. Malako, trustees, uh, get to share some of the awesome accomplishments of the class of 2022. Um, and I'll kind of read them, read them through as we go here. I don't know if the screen is sharing yet. Katie? Yep. There it's we on. go. All right, so total graduates, and, and before we start, I just want to say, um, when I was wandering the halls as a high school teacher and a high school principal, I would often have kids ask, you know, what am I doing here? Why is this worth my time? And uh, <laughs> just did a little search over there. $9,000 a year is the difference between a kid that has a, a high school diploma and a kid that doesn't. So if you extrapolate that out over 30 years, you're talking $270,000, right? And it's just a start. Uh, but more important than that, uh, it teaches kids perseverance. It teaches kids um, social interaction. And um, like Dr. Maleko said, uh, my favorite day of the year is, is commencement day. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get started about the class of 2022. So 1,634 total graduates, which is an increase from last year. Um, I did include some pictures from uh, this year's uh, commencement as well. Uh, we love the um, decorated caps there. In terms of scholarships, and this is kind of across the board, uh, 12654312 uh, That's down a little bit from last year, but still uh, pretty tremendous, um, spread across 1,600 students um, that have earned that much, so pretty impressive. Uh, in terms of early college students, you know, we have the, the two early college programs. We had five total commencements uh, this year. Um, those who earned an associate's degree, 91% uh, of those in the, um, the health side, um, and then 90% in advanced manufacturing, again, have that degree and are walking away um, not only with practical experience um, and a lot of them walking into jobs uh, the minute that they graduated, but also with associate's degree um, and moving toward uh, further degrees. Uh, in terms of our Collegiate Academy students, um, you guys know this program well, 41% of those had associate degrees, 64% uh, had 60 plus transferable credits, and 72% had um, or were part of the Michigan Transfer Agreement. So the Michigan Transfer Agreement, I assumed one of you was going to ask. Um, so it basically is 30 credits in a 2.0 GPA. Uh, those are your gen ed courses that will transfer to colleges and universities. Uh, you would have to take two English courses, one math course, two social sciences, two humanities, and two natural sciences. So our Collegiate Academy students are uh, eating through credits that are going to absolutely help them and impact them um, at the, well, really, whatever they do next. Uh, top colleges our students enroll in. Uh, I don't think this is very surprising, as many of you talked with students at the commencements um, in terms of where they were going. Henry Ford, Wayne State, U of M Dearborn, U of M Ann Arbor, um, U of D Mercy, Lawrence Tech, um, kind of here, here pretty local. In terms of some of the Ivy Leagues that our students got into, it kind of goes across the board. Harvard, Stanford, Dartmouth, Yale, and Penn. Um, Wharton School of Business, I know, is one of the big ones that um, our kids shoot for as we have a, a large contingent of students who um, have a business aptitude and, and go that way or go to Ross at, at Ann Arbor as well. Um, for the last two slides here for the HFC, actually three, for HFC and AP, this was all students just because I wanted to give you guys a glimpse of some of those college-specific experience that our students are having. Um, so this is all students, and this is spread across the full calendar year. Um, you can see there for dual enrollment, we had 820 total students that were enrolled in a HFC class uh, at some point this year. Uh, that was an increase from last year. Uh, Collegiate Academy, that was down a little bit this year, and early college was down a little bit uh, this year as well. But in terms of total DPS students in uh, HFC courses in 2022, um, 1,500 is an incredible number of students who are successful in those college courses. Um, looking at that a little bit more, try to identify how many total classes these students are taking. At the top there, the average student is taking four classes and averaging 12 credits over the course of the school year. Uh, that's pretty much what one semester, one semester typically is in college. Um, and um, President McDonald asked, you know, what does that look like in terms of actual dollars and cents? So I took the uh, school craft per credit uh, rate and multiplied it out by a number of credit hours. You're almost at $2 million of savings for students in terms of credits that they were able to uh, have based on our uh, fantastic partnership there. 
You and, said Schoolcraft. You meant Henry Ford. Sorry, Henry Ford. Okay. Yep, sorry. <laughs> um, and as you can see, for the number of classes and credit hours, um, pretty tremendous the amount of opportunity for our students. And then their success rates over there, um, you know, 72% for Collegiate Academy earning A's and B's, 78% uh, at the early college, and then 79% for our traditional high school students that are also dual enrolled. And that's just semester one. We don't have semester two yet. And then for AP, um, those are courses that are offered in the high school. So we have 20 different AP courses that are offered at our traditional high school and then also at DCMST. Um, we had 1,500 or 95 AP courses that were taken in 21-22. Uh, For those of you that don't know, um, if students score above a three, um, they have an opportunity to earn college credit for those courses as well. And our students typically do pretty well. Um, those scores don't come out until July, though. And that's it. Chelsea Thorpe. Mr. Martin, with the advanced placement courses, and this goes to a question we've had uh, for many uh, different items. How do we pick what subjects are taught at which schools? If the subject that the student wants isn't taught at their school, is there a, a virtual option? How do we handle this? So unfortunately, <clears throat> scheduling at the high school is a complicated mystery that really has to do with the amount of students that want to take the course. Um, so even if we're running courses, sometimes kids aren't able to get in it because the hour that it's running might be the same hour of the other course that they want to run. Um, so we do have opportunities through Michigan Virtual. Um, uh, we have a good amount of kids who uh, we allow them to take that independently through Michigan Virtual. Um, but unfortunately, sometimes there is just a scheduling uh, jam up that doesn't provide them that opportunity. Uh, I will say some of the uh, AP Human Geography was a class that was approved this year. Uh, the goal is to identify some ninth graders that can start taking those. I can tell you the summer program with being able to take accelerated courses and take it, taking credits um, to give kids more time and access to uh, HFC and AP courses will only be a benefit to them in terms of some of those scheduling conflicts. Um, so. My long way of saying is, unfortunately, sometimes those courses can't be fit into their schedule, and we don't necessarily have a, um, a super clean way to provide that solution outside of Michigan Virtual. Thank you. Yep. Trustee Watts. A quick question. You had mentioned in 2022 that the enrollment, due enroll, enrollment between uh, Dearborn Public School and the HFC was lower. It, uh, it was 15, 18. Do you know the number for 2021? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we get there. Um, so the Collegiate Academy was lower and Early College was lower. Um, I did not write those down, though. Okay, that's fine. We can yep. get the numbers later. Yep. Okay. Chelsea Moza. Thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> Mr. Martin, thank you for this presentation. You're welcome. And your insights into some of the slides. So a uh, question about DCMSD offerings. I know we do teach AP Computer Science. Mm -hmm. Do we teach that at the traditional high schools? I do not believe that is running at any of the traditional high schools, but because it's in our course catalog, it could run. Uh, they just historically have not offered it there. And is it because of, as you said, perhaps interest in scheduling, or is it also resource that we don't have that <coughs> so the it'd be, credential yeah. teacher to teach that course? Uh, student interest and instructor that wants to, to run that. Um, yeah, it's kind of kind of both. Yep. In the same lines, I, I believe this policy has been discussed before. Our Fortson graduate or valedictorian received a 4.6 mm -hmm. GPA. It's something yes. to be really proud yeah. of. Uh, she, I think t she has taken 12 AP courses. Yeah. That's a lot. Yep. But obviously, I would assume that perhaps she was a DCMSC <coughs> student, that she was able to take AP course in freshman year? Have access to AP, yes. Uh, so a lot of our DCMST, DCMST students do fall in within our top 10. Um, yeah, they, they do have access to AP um, earlier on. Uh, I can tell you qualitatively from my experience at the, at the high school, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that those students have more access though to those 5.0 weighted courses. 
than a traditional student would at the high school because starting second semester of your sophomore year, you can take 10 right. uh, HFC courses. Uh, and actually, we have a memo of understanding with um, HFC, so that way they can go beyond it as long as it's aligned with their career aspirations. So I know we revised the policy or tightened it or made it clear for students who are not enrolled at DCMSD who are interested in taking AP courses as early as their freshman year. Is that policy clear for all students now and all families? It, it is, um, and depending, and even HFC, right, we do have some ninth graders that have taken dual enrollment course, uh, courses, and uh, with middle schoolers being able to take algebra and be able to take foreign language and some transferring to us from different places, they sometimes come into us uh, with five or six credits, high school credits already. Uh, so depending on the student and kind of where they're at, um, certainly we try to support them by putting them in the best situation possible for their success. Uh, AP courses are pretty rigorous. Uh, yeah. HFC courses are pretty rigorous. Um, and I will say our, our counseling department uh, tries best to place students um, appropriately based on their aptitude, but also their um, acumen in terms of um, their diligence as a student. Uh, the last thing we want to do is put a kid in a situation where they're going to struggle. So, yeah. Just my last comment is yep. on computer science. You know, it's something from NSBA and from my own profession. It's something that is being taught as early as elementary now and, yeah. and, and middle school. So hopefully we can look into at least start to see if, if we can offer either at one of the high schools and perhaps from looking equity uh, looking at an equity um, issue is to offer at all three high schools yep. and to see if there is interest. Pretty sure a lot of students actually at the graduation ceremony at the honors night, many of them are going for computer science. So that's something that hopefully we can uh, look into. For sure. Thank you. Anyone else? Any other questions? No. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Next item, please. Citizen participation. Citizens wishing to address the board on agenda and non-agenda items for action who are signed in by 7, 10 p.m. by submitting a blue card to the board secretary may speak at this time. The board may not be in a position to respond to non-agenda items. Therefore, speakers should not anticipate an immediate response to their comments or questions. For the benefit of all concerned, do not mention the names of students or school board employees, or school district employees, excuse me. Please keep your comments as brief as possible. The board president reserves the right to limit times. Um, the first one, Mrs. Butler would like to come to speak to the board about library slash curriculum. Uh, hello. Um, I know we're not allowed to say names, but I wanted to give a couple thank yous for a meeting that we had last week because there was a very good panel of people sitting in on that meeting and I would like to recognize them if I'm allowed to. Or should we not do that? I'd prefer you Okay. Don't. Well, I just, the panel knows who they are. Exactly. And they were very, very uh, open. They listened. They took feedback. Um, they made the right calls. And, and I just want to say that I'm, I'm really grateful for that. And um, I appreciate, you know, Dr. Maleko setting that up so that I... I met the right people, let's just say that. Um, I wanted to talk about a couple things. Um, we talked about the State Board of Education meeting, Ms. Faraj did, and um, I actually called into that meeting as well regarding the sex ed curriculum. And I know that we have not updated our sex ed curriculum and the meeting I was able to go through some of the stuff. I, we spent more time talking than going through the materials, so I'll make another appointment to go back and do that. However, um, your pot, you know, your idea about the, the citizens and getting that going, but not until September concerns me because some of the curriculum that we're using right now will be, um, what do they call it? Like archived in 2022, June 30th of 2022, some of the models that we're using right now. And I just think that I, I encourage you all, like I did the panel to look at the the Michigan Model for Health, that's the recommended curriculum, um, it is god awful. Awful. And it does not belong in our district. It doesn't belong in any district. Um, we, I know we're using that for the seventh grade, 
So I just wanted to tell you guys, my concerns about that uh, curriculum is, is, for example, the way I understood it, they're going to get the whole binder. Say if they're buying the paper copy, they're going to get the whole binder. Now they, they put in the front of it the recommended units that the teachers should use. Should being the key word, meaning they can still choose from anything out of that book. Some of that material is still not appropriate for seventh graders. That's the, the one I'm talking about, the, the Michigan Model for Health. And the new 2021 version, um, digital version, is, is much worse. So I would implore you guys to take time more to do some research before you put that panel together to see if you can get some other ideas about what would be more appropriate for our students. Um, you know, we have a lot of things going here, diverse, uh, things like that. And it, it brought me to two articles that were written from the Arab American News back in 2016. And this goes to uh, my point about you should use this, but you're able to use anything out of this book kind of thing where there's too much um, leniency. So in 2016, there was two articles written about the sex ed curriculum at Fordson and how the student, the girls were given um, a true or false, you know, a quiz after the, the topic. And the students walked out because it was so vile for them. And, and so they walked out. So you have the, the parents complaining on one hand, but then you also have some, you know, the, the person that was interviewed in that, and, and you guys can look it up, saying that the teachers are saying we need more sex ed, like more detailed sex ed. And I just don't think it's our job as teachers to teach them everything about the world. Like we need to stick to the core things and some things that parents should be talking to their kids about and, and not the teachers. And I wanted to ask about the library books. Um, who, you know, like how do they do their budget and who gets, uh, what oversight are, is there for the librarians for what they can and cannot bring into the library. For example, I know that in <laughs> Michigan schools, we're not allowed to talk to students about abortions and things like that. But how, if we're not, if that's against the law, how do we have books on abortions, multiple books in our school libraries at the high school level? Um, there is how-to guides, let's just say that, um, for sex, literally teaching you about masturbation and things like that. And I'm just wondering who is in charge of making sure that our books in the library are appropriate, not just, you know, age, but there's so many factors to take into it. And I just, I don't know what the process is on it, but hearing that Michigan State Board of Education meeting, and I encourage you all to listen to, it was like, Ms. Fraud, it, it was nasty. It was really nasty. And I'm finding some of those same books in our library because you can go as a parent and do a quick search and you can hit any library. And uh, I just want to know, like, can somebody look into the oversight of that and maybe go through, spend, you, know, get, you know, get parent volunteers or students and have them go in and kind of like look through this stuff. Thank you for your comments. Yeah, and I just wanted to say uh, to... Um, Another thank you, Dr. Maleko, for allowing the curriculum to be looked into because, you know, like Mr. Barry said, that, that statement that went out, that was discouraging, um, but then it got fixed. So, you know, I, I want to thank you for that. And like he said, you know, take your time going through that stuff because there are some things that were found. And to your credit, when they were, they were blocked which is the right thing to do. So I just wanted to say thank you and thank you for that, that panel. And I look forward to doing the review. Trustee Barry? Real quick, what year was that article there? 2016. That's what I thought you said. Yep. Thank you. 2016. Um, Trustee Thorpe? <clears throat> Ms. Butler, I don't know if you had put together in an email the people that you wanted to acknowledge, but if not, could you send it to us? Oh, because that yeah. way we can make sure we share Ab it. Absolutely. Yep. I appreciate that too. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Thank you. Real quick, we can, um, Dr. Maleko and I had a discussion earlier today about trying to find a way to tighten up the curriculum and really look into it. So we appreciate you bringing your uh, And concerns. I do appreciate that too, because I know yeah. there's so much that goes on and you want to give the teachers the benefit of the doubt, which I totally understand, but it, 
the one size approach doesn't work well over here and I know it doesn't work well on the other side. It's just like, how do you find the middle piece to right. that, you know? Well, we're going to do the best we can. Thank and I appreciate that. Thank, thank you, you guys. For bringing it I to appreciate our it. Yes. Just to add to that, and I appreciate, yeah, you were with the right people and I know Ms. Farage and I had a good conversation about that exact thing with a review process we're going to do with the media specialists and others to really look at tightening the curriculum. So thank you. Thanks. And thank you, President McDonald. Next, uh, Mrs. Crystal Paulson would like to speak to the board about the superintendent. It's not going to be nice today. <laughs> so, superintendent, when we started off the school year as a mother, I didn't feel like I was being hurt at all by anybody. And I was determined, how and bound, I was going to be hurt. And with everything that I presented at the last meeting. I felt comfortable as a mother with kids in this community with the job that our superintendent did. I had the meeting with him, with the IT, and two other people that were in the meeting. With everything being blocked, with everything that I gave him, I know he took me serious as a mother, and he was concerned. And as a mother, I thank you, because for once during this entire COVID, what, two, three years, I finally felt <clears throat> I'm an equal with you guys. I'm no longer scared to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation or a meeting in the conference room. You make me feel welcome, and I do appreciate that. I'm going to address the board, not all of them, but somebody. I stand by my words. I stand by the evidence. Everything that I look up, if I stand for my words, and I have no problem backing up the information, but if somebody can't have a conversation and wants to put me out in the other side of Dearborn as Miss Information Queen, you're not giving me the benefit as the mother. You, I voted for, and I regret it to this day. But everybody else, thank you. I appreciate it. Everybody that's been in the meeting with me, I felt more comfortable than what I did in the beginning of the year. So I appreciate everybody. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Next item, please. Or is there, there was it? Mm -mm. Okay. Um, within of the citizen participation board follow-up, I don't know if there was any board follow-up. I have a couple unless there's oh. you, you have one as well. Do you want to go first? You, um, want me you can go first. Okay. So I had uh, um, two um, follow-ups. One was uh, last time there was a uh, question about a staff member that was uh, encouraging uh, students to come to the board meeting. So that was addressed through the appropriate protocols and there was acceptance and it was handled uh, and addressed and that shouldn't have happened and um, it was you know corrected with the employees. So I just wanted to mention that. And then the other one, um, is there was some information brought forward and it was Ms. Paulson and Ms. Butler. And um, there was a situation where we were looking at curriculum where maybe a, uh, a staff member wasn't following the right way they should. We just addressed that this week as well. So when we know these things, we will continue to communicate. And we appreciate the, the dialogue as well because we all know we're in this together to care about students. Uh, and I know the board does as well. So I just wanted to follow up on those two things uh, to make sure that everyone was aware. Thank you. Thank you. Did anyone have anything else? I just want to have a comment about curriculum that I appreciate the rigorous process that we have and the administrators are looking at curriculum. And there are a lot of things right now nationally that are being talked about, lots of concepts. And I appreciate that we're right now and have been looking for parents to be engaged, to look at the curriculum and to provide recommendations because every community, we, we are governed by a local board that determines these things. And every community decides based on its governing body what goes in the curriculum. While we do have some say in, in, in what's being taught, um, a lot of things are being recommended. And I'm, I'm really glad that we're we're walking the process and we're being transparent about it and telling folks how to be engaged. Thank you. 
Chelsea Bear? You know, there's a lot of times where citizens, you know, approach us and talk about things and nothing, they feel like literally nothing happens, even though we know behind the scenes that, you know, we, we address things. But I just want to give credit where credit's due, uh, Trustee Petchikov. It sounds like it should have been a given that we include this in our agenda, but thank you for that great idea. Yeah, absolutely. More follow, appreciate that. Trustee Thor? We always talk about like, the chain of command when people have an issue, who's the appropriate person to go to and it slowly goes up the chain. So Dr. Maleko, if, if we run into situations where parents are, are questioning something like curriculum, where would they go uh, with that type of item? Because I don't, would that be appropriate to take back to the teacher? Would it go at a, at a building level or would it come up to an executive level? I guess it would depend on what the situation is, but I would start at the building level with the teacher or the principal, you know, with the teacher, especially if it's that content area. And then maybe there can be some clarification. Um, but then ultimately there is a process with the curriculum council that approves it. So if it's something that needs to change or something, then there would be a process. I also know that there was a communication um, from a student actually and you know probably starting with the building is because each building has representatives on those curriculum committees as well so that's a good way to get input especially because you have a relationship with the teachers in the community where your students go so that's where i would start but if it's an overarching issue of course you know um, we have dr gruber who's in charge of curriculum in the district and then every building as i mentioned has a representative so the curriculum council is a recommendation that goes through and every building has one representative. So um, the recommendations from committees ultimately go there. And so there is, there are staff at every building that um, are involved in the curriculum process. Thanks. Anyone else? I have a couple that I wanted to address. Um, at the last meeting, we had a representative from Kiwanis and she addressed the board about students being allowed to wear their stoles during graduation. And it was decided to allow students involved in clubs affiliated with national service organizations to, that they could wear their stoles. And that included Kiwanis Key Clubs and Rotary Interact Club. And uh, this decision will continue into the future. And I can just tell you, um, I just got a handwritten letter, th thank you, that I'm gonna have scanned to the board about okay. that very issue. Okay, so. wonderful. Uh, Madam? Yes. I'd like to welcome that decision. I think that was a great decision to make because I know students, they choose what usually part of club they'd like to be affiliated with. And I think rightfully so, if they do their service, that they should wear that on their graduation or that they can wear it to their graduation. I agree. Anyone else? I have one more. Um, it has been discussed through this meeting so far about curriculum. But I wanted to add a little bit to address some of the, oh, I thought you were raising your hand. No, nope. <laughs> I wanted to address uh, some of the misconceptions of social emotional learning in our district. Our students are struggling right now uh, with the pandemic and there's been uh, lots of loss associated with this pandemic, whether it's the loss of a relative or just the loss of freedoms or the loss of just social interaction. And also, um, they went into virtual learning, and then they came back into in-person learning. All of these changes have been very difficult on students emotionally. They need to have the tools that will help them during these times of stress. And that's what social-emotional learning is. The pillars, the pillars of social-emotional learning are managing emotions, setting and achieving positive goals, Feeling and showing empathy, <laughs> establishing and maintain, maintaining positive relationships, making responsible decisions. Now, these are important life skills that our students need, and that's what social-emotional learning is. And I just wanted to clarify that because there's a whole lot of misconception. And these are the skills that will help our students in situations, not just in the classroom, not just today, but in life and their social actions outside of life and for the rest of their lives. So these are tools that are, are very important for our students. Madam and President, I just wanted some clarification on that. I know we had two years ago a presentation on social emotion and learning. So can, can we have a refresher so citizens would understand what that means? 
I think that's a good idea because there is a lot of misconception out yep. there and it's needed Before. more than ever. Absolutely. Right now our students, they're struggling with changes and stress and their families are under a lot of stress and changes. And it's a good thing for our society to understand that and help them and, and realize that uh, this is an important thing that we're helping them deal with. So next item, please. Action items. Are there any agenda items on this agenda? Which board members or the superintendent wish to discuss and vote on separately? If there are, we will exclude these from the motion below. Trustee Barry. Number nine, please, I'd like to pull it. Number nine. Anyone else? Which one is it? Where does it title? Oh, the personal. Um, I, I have the mandatorium at Edsel Ford. I think that was an item I have some questions on. What number is it? Um, I believe it's number four number or number six, is it? So I'd like it pulled too because my questions may sway my vote on this one. Okay. So number six? Yes. And number nine, is that correct? Yes. I circled it, now I can't find it. Is it number nine and number six? Yes. yes. Anyone else? Okay, go ahead. Move that action items number one through five, seven through eight, 10 through 18 be approved as recommended in this agenda with the exception of six and nine. So moved. Support. Okay, we have a move by Trustee Thorpe and support by Trustee Barry, was it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. May I have a roll call, please? Trustee Berry? Yes. Trustee D'Ambrosio? Trustee Moza? Yes. Trustee Petrikoff? Yes. Trustee Thorpe? Yes. Trustee Watts? Yes. President McDonald? Yes. Okay, and then we're going to go back and start with uh, number six. And that was asked to be pulled by Trustee Moza. Go ahead, what is your question? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, yeah. I always jump over that. So. Recommended action, move that the Board of Education authorize the administration to award Pontiac ceiling and partition a contract in the amount of $261,800 with a contingency of $26,200 for a total not to exceed $288,000. A contract with O'Donnell Electric LLC in the amount of $26,300 with a contingency Contingency of 2700 for the total not to exceed 29000 The purchase of equipment from Graybar, Whoa. Sorry. From Graybar in the approximate amount 40000 for a combined grand total of 357000 per report 21-137. So moved. Support. Okay, we have it moved by Trustee Thorpe, supported by Trustee uh, Petchikoff. Um, what are your questions? Thank you, uh, Madam President. I just for the record, I had conversations with Mr. Wall about this, so I called him later, uh, earlier today and I asked him my questions, but I have further questions. So um, as far as this contract, this is just to replace, is this to replace the entire pool at Etzel, or is it just to replace the ceilings, electrical, and um, kind of the, the setting of the pool? Correct. It's for the ceiling, the lights. We're going to switch to LEDs, um, and then it's to do uh, repairs on the tile for the pool because it's deteriorated pretty bad. The pool. Tile the tiles, you said. The tile and grout, correct. On the ground. Inside the, the pool, in the walls. Okay. And on, on this, yeah, and on the walking surface around as well. So, as far as the pool, I just want to make sure, and others want to know if this is obviously a capital project so are we doing a repair or replace it's a repair right it's not a replace okay and the uh, pontiac ceiling and partition was the sole bid for this um ceiling part so do you know the reasons why that we only had one sole provider although this is like a ceiling and it's not like something right. specialized so this was designed by our architects um and it was bid out by clark construction both of them have their own estimators so they both did an estimate on what they thought the budget should be clark construction since they put this bid out um every time they try to solicit uh vendors and they call he called at least 25 vendors 
for the total package, and this was the only one that we could get, but it came into the both estimates from our architects and our Clark construction, so that's why we felt comfortable to move forward with just a sole bid. So I know the term is acquisitional ceiling. Is that how you say that? Acoustical. Acoustical. What, what does that mean? Can you explain that? So right right now there's a, a drop ceiling, um, kind of what you'd look up about, yeah. similar to that. That's an acoustical ceiling. Um, and right now the, they can be knocked out. So we're going to go with a more secure ceiling that can withstand, you know, just by accident, you know, uh, a ball or something gets thrown up there while they're in the pool or what whatnot. And you'd say, uh, obviously from your knowledge of all of our pools and our high schools, Edsel Ford High School being bigger than Fortson's and being bigger than Dearborn's? I don't know how big is Dearborn's. Uh, I would say it's about similar in size to Dearborn High's. But it it's is the bigger. highest in need? It, well, it was. this was brought to our attention by the administration that received complaints from the athletic department, or the athletic boosters, I'm sorry. I'm, and so after we got into it, um, it first started off with just replace or repairing the ceiling. Uh -huh. And after we started looking at the ceiling and the lights, the lights were designed to be in the perimeter over the pool. So anytime that we'd have to change a light bulb or fix a ceiling tile, we'd have to drain the pool. We'd have to put scaffolding in just to change a light bulb. And then we found after looking at it even further that when we drain the pool, we have to keep the walls wet because if the tile dries out, um, they'll pop and it could create a, a really bad situation for us to be able to get repaired in time to be used again. So that's how the scope of work, it kind of was a snowball effect once we started digging into it with our architects. When we design the lights, we're gonna, we design them so they're gonna be on the perimeter. We won't need scaffolding to change them. We're also gonna upgrade the LED lights. And we're also gonna um, design the, engineer the lights. So by state law, you have to be able to see to the bottom of the pool. This pool <laughs> currently has underwater lights. Yep. We designed the above lights to be able to, once those uh, below water lights are become op non-operational, will be still sufficient with the lighting from above. Okay. And the last question is about pricing. Was this because of the time beings of materials, costs, and labor, and inflation? This the escalation. Amount, if this was done last year, probably it would have been yeah. much cheaper than that. In ballpark, okay. from what Clark Construction and Architects have passed along to us, we've they've seen a, about 40% escalation increase in prices Whoa. over last year to this year. And it just keeps going up. So that's why we also thought we should move forward with this instead of waiting on it. That was just reported recently uh, on the news about uh, some uh, construction jobs uh, in Detroit that they ended up not doing uh, several floors. They had to lower the size of it because 40% was the given figure too. Right. And we are trying to save some money by buying the lighting equipment direct. So. Are there any other questions on number six? May I have a roll call vote, please? Trustee Berry? Yes. Trustee D'Ambrosio? Trustee Mosip? Yes. Trustee Petrikoff? Yes. Trustee Thorpe? Yes. Trustee Watts? Yes. President McDonald? Yes. And then going back to nine, would you read it, please? Yep. Recommended action, move that schedule A-13, resignation B-13, Retirement C-13, leave of absence D-13, appointment E-13, return from leave of absence be approved. So moved. Support. I have moved by Trustee Thorpe, support by Trustee Peshlikoff. Um, Trustee Barry? Madam President, mine is easy. I just have to abstain from voting on this agenda. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you could have done that first. <laughs> <laughs> so may I have a roll call, please? Um, so in this case, do I just say Trustee Barry or do I... Here. Mm. Okay. Trustee D'Ambrosio. Trustee Mosip. Or voting yes or no? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yes. He's abstaining, that's why. Um, do, do we know the reasons why we're abstaining? He had to abstain. I have a family member. He, he has agenda. somebody okay. on here. Then, then yes. Trustee Petrikoff? Yes. Trustee Thorpe? Yes. Trustee Watts? Yes. President McDonald? Yes. Next item, please. She, she has to read the, oh, I'm, the <laughs> summary. <laughs> Let me take a deep breath. Hold on. Summary of action of agenda action items. Number one, approval of an award to Thayner Electronics Lab. Number two, approval of an award to Zoom Video Communications, Inc. 
Number three, approval of an award to AOS. Number four, approval of an award to Severin Intermediate Holding, LLC. Number five, approval of an award to Competitive Network Management per report, Board Report 21-137. Number six, approval of an award to Pontiac Ceiling and Partition, O'Donnell Electric, LLC, and Gray Bar per Board Report 21-138. Number seven, approval of an award to Detroit Disposal. Number eight, approval of an award to Divergent. Nine through 12, approval of non-instructional and instructional personnel items for P12. Number 13, approval of 2022-2023 District Membership and Michigan High School Athletic Association per Board Report 21-143. Number 14, approval of 2022 high school graduates. Number 15, approval of resolution of school of choice. Number 16, approval of the adoption of the 2021-2022 second budget revision per board report 21-144. Number 14, approval of the adoption of the 2022-2023 budget per board report 21-145. Number 18, approval of donations. Next item, please. Discussion items, there's none. Next item, please. Board of Education Business, acknowledgements of correspondence. We have gotten quite a few, um, a lot pertaining to some recent issues that have been brought forward to the board. And we also have, um, this was um, created by the adult education group, and we have five of them, and it is a cookbook. It was a, created by the entire group, correct? Or yes. is it one student? No, okay, the, the group. And it's a cookbook, and we have five of them. They were given to us, so... Anyone that's interested, go ahead and take them. And I want to thank them for their creativity. I've looked through it. It looks like some really good recipes and some really cool drawings, too, and artwork. So thank you, Adult Education. And I went to uh, that graduation recently, and I just, it's one of my favorites because these folks have had some struggles throughout their lives, and they wanted to go back and make sure that they got their high school diploma. So very proud of those students. Next item, please. Board member committee and organization reports. The building and site committee met earlier today. We reviewed several items. Uh, we're going to be doing an update on the district website with the dashboard of how we've been spending money through the ESSER budget and general funds. Uh, we also talked about updates, uh, what's going on uh, with some improvements over at the transportation buildings with fuel tanks and things. Uh, the district expects all of the new CareHawk emergency notification systems to be operational, uh, fully tested and operational by the start of the, the upcoming school year, except for, I want to say, ASC and transportation, but all the schools should be up and uh, running. Uh, for upcoming projects, we met and began looking over some of the uh, artist renditions of the uh, new building for the Henry Ford Early College. We're going to need to have that as more of a discussion item for the board so we can uh, begin to uh, move forward with the capital projects that are going to be needed at that facility. Uh, and also, we also got updated on an expansion that will be happening over at Hague Elementary. That's it. Okay. Can, I, can I just mention we have Dan Phillips here from CareHawk who's been here today. So okay. Working with us today. Thank you for coming. Trustee Barry. We have a city relations meeting coming up. And uh, Joanne, thank you for the email. I just want to reach out to my colleagues if there's anything. I know uh, Trustee Thorpe said there was a couple things he wanted to add to the agenda. If anything you wanted to add to the agenda, let us know by noon tomorrow, please. Then we'll try to finalize it and get that agenda over to the mayor's office. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Peshikoff. Uh We had an unexpected cancellation of the superintendent's evaluation due to uh, several of us having been unable to attend at the last minute. That being said, it's been rescheduled for July 13th. And so at 6 p.m., it will be a closed session per uh, the superintendent's request. I just wanted to remind everybody. I have a question on that, Trustee um, Pazhkov and Madam President. So the current contract has June 30th as a as a date. It's an evergreen anymore. contract. It just automatically rolls over. Right. So since we're missing, due the air evaluation has nothing to do with the rollover of the contract. If you read the, his contract, we would have to have submitted a 
uh, letter to him that we were not going to be entertaining, retaining him 30 days prior. That's the the Evergreen contract has nothing to do with the eva the evaluation. The only I know thing there, there was a mention, if you can explain, the June 30th. That's in his date is when the contract ends. ends and the rollover I see. then takes place. The evaluation is not, does not affect that. It does. It does trigger other things. In the does, yeah, it does a, a raise. Yeah. As a practice, right. we've tried to have Correct. it done. Correct. Yes. This month, yes. So but I also talked to MASB, and they said as the, the state's rule is as long as you're um, making your best effort to do it within a time frame close to when the annual. It, yeah. It's a, it, all it requires is an annual evaluation. It doesn't have a date to it. Sure. Sure. Thank you. And we certainly made an effort. And we made an effort. <laughs> we did. <laughs> Okay, anyone else? Next item, please. Board member slash superintendent commentary. Trustee Thorpe. One item we heard over and over again with the potential for a bond and the improvements that people would want to see was bathrooms. And recently the district uh, gave attention to bathrooms, specifically at Fortson. It was about two weeks ago we got pictures from uh, Mr. Andrews about Look at the new partitions we put up in the bathrooms. And then two days later, we get an email from him saying uh, the partitions have been ripped off the walls. Uh, my parents would have said something like, this is why we don't buy you nice things, because you can't take care of it. Uh, so please understand the frustration as a board member where we want the students to have nice things. But then we go and we, we give them what they want and someone or some group uh, negligence happens. So I would ask students, if you know or if you see of anybody doing anything that is damaging our sites, vandalizing our sites, please let us know. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Watts? Um, just a few things. I wanted to say a belated Happy Father's Day to all of the dads here that are present. Um, and just a couple of quick words. So we had mentioned or we had heard earlier um, that a staff member had used the words where school is home and where we make a school a home. And so the last day of school, my daughter, I, she was walking home and she had told me a couple of observations and she was probably pretty quiet about this year. And she struggled in <coughs> second grade when COVID shut down the schools and she had anxiety attacks, things that were unprecedented to us. But she had told us, or she told me on the way home from school on Friday, that it was the best year she's had, that the school year went by so fast, and that she felt like it was a home. And to the teachers out there and to the administrators and to everyone else, like that was a moment for me where I realized the, the heavy burden that she was holding on to because this was her first full year since first grade. Um, and so I just appreciate her teacher, Ms. Juttonen at Lindbergh and all of the staff members and um, just to be able to give her that sort of normalcy again. Um, it was just um, things that I like to, I didn't realize she was missing. So, my two cents. And also be safe this summer, everybody. Trustee Rosen. I want to echo the same sentiments that I'm really glad that two kodos are in school. <laughs> They're not, I'm not teaching them. Yeah, I think we are. You all realize the week after how school is very important for the kids to be in uh, when COVID hit. And uh, when you start picking up that you know, math uh, book and you try to teach that to an 11-year-old, it's very difficult. Um, I just want to mention that uh, the bullying has been a, a very big problem uh, in our schools and nationally, especially after COVID. I don't know what really happened. Um, people in general are very impatient. Uh, Cyberbullying increased by a lot. Even suicide rates increased in, in, in schools nationally. And I appreciate at least uh, the, the, the building that I always interact with my, at the middle school, Estelle, with um, principal and the teachers just taken back and psychologists and all the workers and social workers, they're very overwhelmed of how much um, 
issues are happening at the schools, especially at the middle school level where students are finding themselves and they're, this is when it happens when the bullying intensifies. I, I hope that we can look into, and Dr. Maleko can look into the cell phone policy at the middle schools. It's something I think that should be discussed and should be looked into. As I feel like an 11 year old having a cell phone, yeah, there is the security and the, oh, I need to be able to reach my son or my daughter. But I believe that needs to be looked into of how to make sure that that does not impact our students where they're sending either photos or doing cyberbullying in school or holding to that phone. I, I do understand from learning from at least out um, example of how they have spaces where they can utilize their cell phones only during recess. But most of the time, that's when bullying really happens, during recess. So I hope that we can look into that policy district wide. Thank you. And happy Juneteenth to everyone. Um, obviously, it's being celebrated. Uh, uh, and um, have a safe summer. Trustee Barry. Real quick, I was just looking through this cookbook. There's a couple recipes in here I'm getting ready to use. <coughs> the most important, uh, I want to give uh, credit to uh, uh, the art on the front here, Rawaya Sala. Great job. Oh, thank you. I missed that. Yeah, I, I just noticed that <laughs> as we were talking. Yeah. Anyone else? I just want to, once again, I'm sorry I wasn't able to be there in person this year. Um, Trustee Barry and I go back a long way to going to every graduation and shaking all the hands. And I went to some of the smaller ones. It was much easier for me to navigate. But I just want to give a wonderful shout out. And um, we're so proud of you. Do great things. We expect great things of you. Our graduates, congratulations. Their parents, congratulations. And uh, again, have a wonderful summer, everyone. You were there in spirit. I was absolutely there in spirit. Roxanne wouldn't have missed this race <laughs> many times. Yes. Absolutely. You were there. So, uh, next, request for information and or future agenda items. So I, I already requested yes. SEL presentation perhaps for next meeting, if possible, and then looking into the cell phone policy in middle schools. Anyone else? Oh, sorry, Trustee Thorpe. Two items. Uh, it was alluded to, I believe, Ms. Farage mentioned it, the graduation rate. Uh, so Dr. Maleko, before we go back into school, if you can let us know, uh, we had a slight fall in, in graduation rates. Are we doing anything to try to pick that up? What else new might be coming to the district for the, the next school year? So that's one item. Uh, the second was something that I mentioned at the last board meeting, again, about safety and things we could be doing to try to make the buildings more secure possibly over the course of the summer. I don't know if we ever really interact with the Dearborn police. Yeah, if there's additional things that they think we might be able to do that'll be uh, cost efficient, quick turnaround, maybe things that could be in place before we get back in in uh, end of August, thanks. Maybe we can add that to the agenda for next week's meeting with the city. Thank you, that wouldn't, wouldn't hurt. Trustee Barry. Two items, Madam President. Uh, it was mentioned earlier, and I know we're moving forward, we're going to do a very, very uh, countable job doing uh, ordering our books for the library, but if we can get like a summary, how does that happen? Do we Who orders the books at the library level? Is it the district decision? It's the individual schools? Is the teacher asking for it? And when the books do arrive, who checks them in? Is there a process, I guess, is the question. And the other one, you know, Madam President, is in the spirit of transparency. When we do acknowledgement of donations, <coughs> yes, we want to thank the people who donated to our district, but at the same time, it's in our policy that, you know, <coughs> accept these. The board has to approve these donations. So with that being said, I did mention earlier that there was a vendor that reached out to me through a mutual friend. Uh, it was not appropriate. I did check with my colleagues. They didn't reach out to anybody else, but uh, started thinking about it when they did reach out to me a few days ago that, uh, you know, maybe on the other side. So this goes to Dr. Maleko. Uh, any vendors that give us gifts, you know, if it's food, drinks, you know, football passes, football, I mean, baseball, 
Uh, I'd like the last few years, if you're aware of any, for us to know. Uh, the last few years, I also would, I want to mention uh, Chartwell's food services because there was a lot of rumors way back then. If you're aware of anything, and any of the, it's any of all vendors, but including our, uh, our attorneys too. Are they giving us any gifts or what have you, please? That's all I have. Anyone else? Next item. Future meeting dates, Tuesday, June 28th, 2022, P-12 City Relations Committee meetings, 4 p.m. at the Dearborn Administrative Center and the Emergency Operations Center. Tuesday, 28, June 28th, 2022, HFC Special Board of Trustees meeting closed 6 p.m. at the Administrative Services and Conference Center in the Rosenau Boardroom. Wednesday, July 20th, P12 Board Retreat, 6 p.m. at the Administrative Service Center in Room 12. Monday, July 25th, 2022, P12 Board of Education meeting, 7 p.m. at the Administrative Service Center in the Frank Franchi Boardroom. And lastly, Thursday, July 28th, 2022, P12 Board Retreat, 6 p.m. at the Administrative Service Center in Room 12. And you're oh. <laughs> I forgot that part, huh? I forgot. <laughs> and we are adjourned. <laughs> <laughs>